Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On or around the year of our Lord, 215, a bishop made record of how Christians were baptized. And this is a very important record because he chose to record the tradition that has been handed down to him from the apostles. The name of the work is The Apostolic Tradition, and the author is Hippolytus. The setting, Holy Week, 185 years after the resurrection of our Lord. Those to be baptized are told to fast on Friday and Saturday, and to be in vigil all night long Saturday. They must prepare to be born again, born from above. Baptism will take place on Easter Sunday at the very hour when Jesus rose from the grave. Easter morning at sunrise, little children are baptized first. If they are unable to answer questions, their parents answer for them. An oil of exorcism is prepared, and the ones to be baptized renounce Satan and all of his ways and all of his works. And they are anointed with the oil of exorcism. Turning to the east, they each make confession of their faith in the triune God. And the words he records are almost identical to the Apostles' Creed. And they are baptized. Then they are anointed with the oil of thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. New clothes are put on, and the bishop lays hands on them individually, declaring the forgiveness of sins and praying for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. More oil is poured, and a holy kiss is given. Blessings and prayers are then offered, followed by three drinks. First, a drink of water to signify an inner cleansing that has taken place through holy baptism. Milk and honey are given to drink, for they are as little children, and their hearts are nourished with God's word. And finally, they are given their first sacramental meal, the true body and most precious blood of Christ Jesus. Hippolytus concludes that when these things have been accomplished, each believer should be zealous to perform good works and to please God, living righteously, devoting himself or herself to the church, and increasing in the service of God. Simply put, baptized Christians have been given a new identity. They have been buried in the baptismal waters with Christ Jesus. They have been raised in spiritual resurrection through Christ. They are forgiven, filled with the Holy Spirit, and born from above. Naturally, they will be zealous for good works. Now in the waters of holy baptism, this too took place in you. You were joined to the death and the resurrection of Christ. Your old sinful self was crucified with him, and you were killed, the first death, and buried in the grave with Jesus. Then, just as Jesus was raised from the dead, God raised you to a new life. He forgave your sins, gave you the Holy Spirit, and made you his own child. He saved you. And yes, all of this he did for you and to you in your baptism. Resurrection life has already begun in you through baptism into Christ. And just as Jesus is alive, he is alive in you right now. So as St. Paul writes in our epistle today, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above.
The New Testament has a tradition of, of making verbs out of words. Preachers give a eulogy. A eulogizo is the Greek word for it. It's the good newsing, or if you will, the gospeling. And so in baptism, you have been Christed. You have been made into Christ. And you were Christed in the waters of holy baptism. Jesus now lives in you. And naturally, you think of the words of Christ and do the works of Christ. This is a statement of your true spiritual identity. And accordingly, St. Paul admonishes us to stop thinking as the world thinks. Do not set your mind on the things that are of the earth or the flesh or the devil. You have died to these things. Set your mind on things that are above. You have been Christed. You are his. He is yours. And that is who you really, truly are. But you might say, I don't really feel Christed. I don't remember when some guy in a strange white dress took me in my own strange white dress and tried to drown me. I don't remember any of that. I still feel sinful and earthly and anything but Christ-like. I have those shameful thoughts, those sinful actions. And of course you do. Luther is one who wrote that even though the old flesh is buried in baptism, it still clings to us like the dead flesh that won't fall away. Being baptized does not mean that we won't be tempted to sin, but it does mean that the crucified and resurrected Jesus is joined to you and lives within you. And of course this idea is somewhat hard to grasp. We like things that are tangible or concrete, or at least something that we have a little bit of control over. When Mary and the disciples saw the resurrected Jesus alive before their eyes, it was too good to be true. And yet, it was true. When you were baptized into the death and the resurrection of Jesus, that too might seem a bit too good. And yet, it is true. For when you were baptized, you received the forgiveness of sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit. You were joined to the death and resurrection of Jesus and given new and indeed eternal life. And now this isn't true simply because I say so or because I sincerely wish it to be that way. It's true. It's true because it's God's promise. It's His Word. And what He says is true. You say that you can't see Christ or feel the Holy Spirit. Well, you can't see him in the world either, but he created the world and he sustains the world. And yet he is hidden, but he's also hidden in you. So St. Paul says, your life, your life is hidden in Christ. And there's something else you can't see yet. But it's also still true. For when Christ comes again and is revealed, you too will be revealed in glory. And that's an incredible thought. Jesus, who was crucified and resurrected, and who sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, in heaven, who's going to come again, well, he's going to come from heaven with a shout. The voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God, he will come in great glory. And then you too will be revealed. Apocalypto. That's the Greek word. That's the Greek word that we get apocalypse from. It means revelation, a revealing. And whenever I hear that word, I think of a magician saying apocalypto. And suddenly, there it is, revealed. 
On this Easter Sunday, we Christians remember that Jesus was crucified in our place, that he paid for our sins, and he died the death that we deserved. And also, Jesus was raised from the dead, and through the waters of baptism, he has raised you to a resurrection life. For by water and the word he has made you children of God. And when Christ returns, he will call his children to him. Paul admonishes us to think about the glory that's coming. To think about the things that are above. Consider yourself dead to immortality. Im excuse me, dead to immorality. You're going to be alive for immortality. That would be a terrible typo. You consider yourselves dead to immorality, to impurity, to evil desire and greed. Put aside your anger, your wrath, your malice, your slander, your abusive and ugly speech. Don't you know who you really are? Have you forgotten? Think about the things that are above. Seek after them. Let the word of Christ dwell in you and live as God's beloved child. And so this morning as we celebrate the festival of the resurrection of Christ Jesus, we declare his power over sin, death, and the devil. And we rejoice that the power of Christ has been given and applied to us in the waters of holy baptism. And we have been raised up with Christ. He is our life. And though it is beyond understanding, when He returns, we too will be revealed in glory. In the four short verses of today's epistle, Paul profoundly shapes our understanding of our true identity, our true lifestyle. We have been joined to the death and the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. He lives in us, and when He returns, we will be revealed with Him in His glory. And these two events, the one behind you, holy baptism, the one ahead of you, the revealing of glory, change you forever. He has transformed who you are and how you live. You have been raised up. And it's no wonder that your mind is set on things above. You have been Christed. Happy Easter. And may the peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.